Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools? And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools?
and find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Good morning and welcome to Yarn Lane. So if you love knitting and crochet and all things yarn, you are going to love this. If you're brand new to watching Yarn Lane, welcome, welcome to the Yarn Lane family. Um, we on Sewing Street, if you're a Sewing Street viewer, you know we always have that early bird, which is a special offer. Well, on Yarn Lane, we have Yarn Lane Loves instead, which is just something that we love. That's really useful. Not all the time, just every so often we have a Yarn Lane Loves. So this today it's little it's a little thing but i love this it's rose gold which is always a winner it looks like a pair of glasses doesn't it but no if you pull it out like that and you go like that look it's a pair of scissors how fantastic are they for your work box so in your knitting bag look at that 2.99 they're rose gold fantastic one with the sewing or knitting you can chuck them in your knitting bag because you know it's like they're ever so sharp and honestly they are just perfect for a little demonstration. Oh, nice picture. That's a nice picture, isn't it? Rose gold as well. Perfect for snipping thread. So you can just pop them, you know, if you're short of space, but also, you know what it's like, you pop them into your sewing bag, you put your handles in, hands in, you're looking for the right yarn, you end up poking your fingers. So these are perfect, and then they just slide back in. Folding scissors, rose gold, $2.99, pop them in your basket, almost covers your P&P, &P, which is $3.95, exactly the same as Sewing Street. Anyway, so that's those. Put them in your basket because we are limited in stock of those. So if you want them, you do need to remember to check out. Um, but today, today is all about crochet and it's all about granny squares and shoulder bags. So Wendy is back with me. Now, I said to Wendy, morning, Wendy, again. Morning. Good afternoon, um, actually. A while ago, well, yeah. like a few weeks ago, um, I've got a crocheted granny square shoulder bag and I love it I use it when I go out so when I go out for an evening rather than taking my big handbag I take everything out of it and I just put my a nice few things I made one for my friend as well and she loved it so I said when do you need to sign us a granny square shoulder bag because I know how much you all love granny squares so 
We have three different ones depending on the colour you want and the type of yarn you want. So the first one is the pure wool. Now this has, let me show you, you can make from this kit two shoulder bags. Wendy designed it to make one and then she had a bit of yarn left over so she had to go and made another whole one. So from the kit you can make two depending on how you work out your colours. Or one and a lot of yarn left over. She even put pom-poms in this one. They look like little ears. Aren't they gorgeous? So they've got the strap. You can wear them across body or over them. And then they are nice and dense inside. So you don't need to line them. You can line them if you want to. Very easy to do. But you don't have to. And they're beautiful. Now, you know what it's like, particularly when you go onto the high street, you go into any of these really cool stores if there are granny squares everywhere loads and loads of the high street shops so you can look really cool or you make them for someone else and they will too now this one this is the first colorway is neutrals it is made from pure wool west yorkshire spinners jacobs yarn it is absolutely gorgeous now what i love most about this yarn is it isn't dyed which is amazing so in the kit this is what you get you get two accrues, and remember the Jacobs, this, so these are the, the plain sheep, completely undyed, obviously washed and everything and spun, and it smells like sheep, it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So you get two accrues, then you get a light grey, and remember, so they just have to pick the right coloured sheep. I wonder if they sort of go around the fields and go, no, we've got enough medium brown ones, off you go, we only want light browns today, so you get then a light brown. Then you get a medium brown and then you get a brown black. So you get 500 gram hanks of this. And you can actually make, when do you use this? Because I only sent her one lot, to make both bags and both bags. And that one, both of them. And you get full instructions of how to make them with written by Wendy, all the details you need are in here of how to make the bag with um, pictures as well. So that is the pure one wool neutrals. It's an Aran weight yarn um, and Wendy's crocheted it with a slightly smaller hook um, which gives you that denseness and you're going to learn some new techniques with this as well. A third of this stock has already gone. So if you've already if you've been on Sewing Street and you've checked out there today, your postage is done because you only have you only need one account to go across Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. So if you've already checked out, then your postage is done. You can check out here without having to pay any extra at all. If you're only shopping on Yarn Lane, if you then carry on buying anything on the website, you only get charged one set of postage and packing. So colour number two is let's do blue. So this is the one that Wendy's working with. And I've only got a square at the moment. So that is what the front of the bag will look like in the blues. OK, because that's her sample one. So these are, this is a difference. So this is Stylecraft, beautiful quality acrylic yarn, but an Aran weight. So this is why, you know, this is there's a difference in price point between this one and the pure wool one. It depends on what you need. So in the kit for this, you get 200 grams of white. You then get 100 grams of, they all have lovely names, denim, 100 grams of Cornish blue and 100 grams of midnight. And that's everything you need. And remember, you will be able to make two bags out of this because there's enough yarn for two bags. And obviously the full instructions of exactly how to make it. I know the picture on the front is of the other colorway, but the instructions are exactly the same. You've just got to choose the colour. So that's the blues. And then finally, we have the, what did we call this one? F floral or pastel? Can't remember. Floral, floral. So the floral is this one here. Isn't it pretty? So you've got a look. Again, you can make two out of this. And Wendy will talk that, you through that in just a moment because um, she had planned to only make one but then realised you could make two. So this one is predominantly cream. That's the main colourway. And then it features these other pretty colours. But look, you've got... Oh, you can see there. You're not looking at that one. You've got lovely um, stripes on the inside and on the back. And then this large granny square on the front. Very trendy. 
So you get two balls of cream, you get a ball of fondant, or fondant, fondant. If you watch um, that fantastic cake, Cake Boss, anyone who watches Cake Boss will know what I mean, fondant. Um, 100 grams of meadow and 100 grams of aster. Really, really pretty colours. So very sort of springy, summery. Just depends on the, what you want. Now, there are less than 20 of these left. So if you do want one, you need to check out. And again, obviously, you get the full instructions with that. So, Wendy. Oh, good afternoon. Ah, hello, hello again. <laughs> where, do we, where, where do we start? Where, what, where did you start? Um, well, as always, you <laughs> do what you always do and give us too much. Yes. Well, it's nice to have a bit more, isn't it? Well, we wanted four colours. That was mm. the one thing that we knew that we wanted yes. was to yes. have four colours in it. But of course, with that, it means that you've got more of some than you need. True. So I had a go at making the second one. Now, I will be really honest with you with the second one, but you'll have already made one. So you'll know exactly what you're doing. Yes. That you can't call the main main, because if you'll see that if you open the second one out, it's not cream. This one. Yes. So you just have to use what you've got. <laughs> yeah, you, well, once yeah. you've made one, what you've got left, you can then work out where I'm what you're I'm very, very confident where. that once you have made it, mm. that you will know exactly how it's put together and what you need to do. What I would advise, and what I did first, the, the flap that you're holding, mm. I made it exactly the same as the first one. Right. So I, I edged it with cream. Okay. But when I came to put it together, it just didn't look right. So I unpicked it and put the darker colour oh, on the okay. outside. But it did, so you will have enough to make the front panel again. Right, so you could have made it exactly the I same. I could have but made the just, front panel right. the same, but it just didn't look, because then you to attach the, the front to the back, you create the little bit at the top. Yeah, I, like, I quite like that, um, that little ridge, it's like a hinge. It is, but that's to get the depth, to have some depth in the bag. Yes. But it just didn't look right with the cream. So that's why I unpicked it and did oh, it with the darker okay. colour. Um, but again, you can do what you want to do. And because you've already made one, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. And then just keep going in rows and change colour as you please. So Fantastic. you can do every other row. You can ch yes. keep changing. I um, love this one because it's really woolly, isn't it? That one, is, if you can feel between the two, is a little bit more structured. And that's purely yes. because of the... Just because of the type of yarn, it is, isn't that's it? That's all it is. There's mm. nothing um, different other than the fact that Well, they're that all an Aran weight yarn. They're all Aran, but because that one is a little bit coarser, it's yeah. perfect. It just makes it a bit more structured. So you're using a three and a half mil hook, which all you keen crochets out there will know that we don't normally use a three and a half mil hook with an Aran yarn, do I we? I would never, ever go below a five with an hour and this states on the on on your band on your wall band your yarn you're going okay. to get um, a recommendation so that is the um the hook if you want to buy the three and a half mil hook because you only need one size hook that's the one you need if you don't have one already if you haven't got one you will need that one 2.99 right yeah, so, sorry, um, on the, the, the band, you, it will give you a recommendation what you mm. should use for the yarn. That is only a recommendation, unless, of course, you're working to a pattern that has to have a certain size, but then you'll have to do a swatch. Um, but for something like this, I just went with what I wanted to do. And if you go up a hook size with the, the then recommended, you're going to get a looser weave. But yes. we've come down. But we haven't just come down one hook size. We've come right down to a 3.5. Mm. Now, that was as much as I could push it. Yeah. Because if I went any smaller, the hook, the, the loop yeah, kept popping off it. the yeah, end of my hook. Uh, because what you want, and it really does make it obvious with that, um, with the, the brown bag, is that you want a nice, dense weave. Now you can see when I pull this, there's yeah, not no, it's really lovely because the one I made, it. which is different, is I had to line because it was too holy. And but that's this what you really I, don't I didn't to. want to do. If, 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 however, you want to use a bigger hook because um, you find it easier, that is absolutely mm. fine. But you probably will have to line it because I've just done a, a couple of little swatches here. This one is the recommended. This is what it recommends that you use, which is a five mil hook. Mm. I wouldn't go any less, but I would normally go more because I like my work fluid. But you can see there is a huge amount yeah, of stretch that and you would can start. see the holes. So mm. as you, you put stuff need, in yeah. it, you're going to lose stuff out of it. But then you've got these three, which are exactly the same, exactly the same hook you. So I've used a 3.5 hook 
in all three of these, 10 stitches and 10 rows. But we're going to do this middle stitch. Now, do you, you do crochet, don't you? Uh, ish. Mm. Okay, you do, don't you? Um, normally when you do a double crochet, and this is what these stitches are in, you put insert hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Mm. With this one, on the first step of that, I've done a yarn under. Oh, okay. So it makes the stitch a little bit tighter. And as you can see, this is fine. This is not too bad, but there's a little bit of stretch in it. But as we start going down, then there's really not much stretch. And that's yeah, what we're Yeah, and that's lovely. For. So you can put it in and you don't, and that's, you know, it's just a nice yeah. technique to learn that. It is. And this one well. is even further. You can stretch, take it even further. This is a yarn under, yarn under. Mm. So that's even tighter. But to me, for someone that's just beginning out, that is a little bit too tight yeah, for them. Yeah. So I've gone for the middle option. I am going to show you how to do that. I've just realised I'm looking very untidy there today, aren't I? So <laughs> where do we start? Do we start with the granny square? I would definitely start with the right. granny square um, because then you can get used to the hook and you can get used to your tension. Now, the only thing you need to do for the first bag is you need to assign the main colour is going to be the colour that's got two balls. Right. So, so that's the first thing cream, you need to do. Cream or so white. The cream or white, yeah. Right. The second thing you need to do is assign the colours um, B, C or D. Okay. It doesn't matter where you put them. In this one, I've gone for the darker colour in the middle, but it doesn't matter. You can put them yes, anywhere you, can you like. Choose, yes. On the two brown ones, I've changed the colours up yeah, slightly. Yeah, they have actually. Yeah, um, that's true. But the, the only thing is the main colour for the first bag will have to stay. But the, on the front of the instructions, because you've got the photo of the finished granny square, you can look at that and choose, can't you? Absolutely. Say, which colour do I want in the centre and then mm -hmm. choose at that point. And then okay. it's all it's done. It's very, very easy because you've got, uh, we start off with a circle. And this is what I'm always, I like to teach people something new and push them a little bit each time. So we start off and then we turn it into a square. And all that happens is the what you do to create corners. So the first thing we're going to do, and I'm not going to do it in the, the dark because that is rather, rather dark Hard to, to see, see, isn't it? It is rather hard to see. On that telly. One. It's very hard. And I've been very naughty with making things hard today, haven't I? So I'm not going to do that <laughs> now. Now, I do like to work as you know, the magic ring. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to do that this time because it doesn't really matter if the hole does, if the bag does have a little tiny hole in the middle. But because we're working popcorn stitches into a magic ring, it's quite unpredictable. Okay. Now, those that are very confident with their crochet would just go, yeah, that's fine, I'll be able to do it. But if you're a little bit unsure, then just do the method that I'm going to do now. So I'm going to create a circle, but this time I'm going to do it with chains. So you've got the, the yarn that's coming out of the ball is called your working yarn. So this is my working yarn and this is my little tail. So the first thing we're going to do is create a slip knot. So we get our tail and we place it over the working yarn and we're left with a little loop. So we just reach through that loop and grab the working yarn and pull. And we now have a loop that we can change the side of, size of and it's called a slip knot. So I'm going to put my hook in there and just pull the working yarn and pull that closed. I don't want it to be too tight because otherwise I'm not going to be able to get it off the hook. And then I'm just going to chain. You can chain four or five. It's, it's up to you how big you want to do your hole in the center. And you'll be pleased to know I've got the right glasses on now so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> so a chain is simply yarn over the hook and pull the loop off the hook. Yarn over the hook and pull the loop off. So we do four or five chains and then we're going to slip stitch back into that first chain. We don't want to go into the slip knot because that's going to undo. So we go into that first chain. So we insert the hook and then we yarn over, pull both loops. And we have created, although you can't see it, <laughs> we have created a little ring. So that, if I can stick my finger through it, we create a little ring. Now that's the equivalent to a magic ring. Now a magic ring, after you've completed your first round, you would pull tight and close that gap up. Because mm. we're going to be working in that, we are going to create a, a, a hole in that center. You can either leave it with a tiny hole or you can, you can sew round the hole with like a running stitch and just pull it tight. Now we're going to create the first round, which is the popcorn stitch. Now this is nothing, this is a really easy stitch once you master it. But the first popcorn of the round, and there's three popcorn rounds in, in the front, um, is a little bit different to the rest of them because we need to get the height to get up to um, a treble. And this is what the popcorn stitch is created out of. So to do that, we just need to chain three 
I'm sorry I am squeaking because it is very warm in here, so I'm squeaking. I do <laughs> apologise. That's the hook, not me. <laughs> um, so that is my first treble. Then what we need to do is we need to do four more trebles because a popcorn stitch is made up of five trebles. So we're just going to yarn over and then we're going to insert it in the centre of that ring. And then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So now we've created two trebles. So one of them, remember, is a three chain, and that's a proper treble. So we do another three, because we want five in total. <laughs> can you hear me squeaking? No, can no, you? I think I it's can, just you. I can hear me squeaking. Oh. <laughs> yes. I may not get to the end of the popcorn stitch, because <laughs> it's very squeaky. So now I've got five trebles. So one, remember, is made up of my three chain, and then I've got four further trebles. Now to create a popcorn stitch, we remove the hook from that last treble, and then we're going to insert it back into the first one. But remember, it's a three chain, that first one. So we put it in the third chain in the top of that, and then we pick up the fifth loop, and then we just put the first one over the fifth and we've created a little popcorn stitch. Mm. We now want to do five more in the round but if we just did five more because we've pulled that stitch in at the back if you can see it's, it's kind of squashed it in half we need to allow chains in between so that we can get this center nice and flat. Yeah yes so that you can get the more stitches yes. in round so the we just side. do a chain three And then we do a popcorn stitch back into that ring. Now this time it's a proper popcorn stitch because we haven't got the chain three at the beginning. So we do five trebles into that centre ring. <laughs> Can you not hear that? <laughs> no. No. So I can't hear any squeaking. It is so squeaky because um, my Cause hands, hands are, are hot. so hot. <laughs> Sorry. They're just not working today because they are hot. Coupled with the fact I'm using Aran wool with a 3.5 mil hook. <laughs> and then we do four. I should have probably done this with a bigger hook, shouldn't I? Because there we go. So now we've done our five trebles. We remove the um, loop off the hook. Now, it, if you're new to doing this stitch, you may want to elongate that so that it doesn't pop undone. And then we go back into the top of the first treble. You've done this stitch, haven't you? Yes. You'll say you're looking a little bit perplexed, but you didn't. Yeah, no, no, I have. It's fascinating. It is. It's a brilliant stitch. Mm. I love this. So we put it back into the first treble, pick up the fifth treble loop, and just place that over. So now we've created two popcorns. And then all you do is we just keep going around and it's all uh, what I do with my instructions is I explain row by row for you right just yes you. yes so it really does so if you're if you know a lot about crochet you can just go okay I've got that I've got that but if you're new you follow it step by step absolutely um, and each time that you do go round the it's quite repetitive so the first the third mm. and the fifth row are the same but I will tell you exactly how many stitches yes. you need to be but then there. it's nice I'd you'd rather have more than less and go yeah I know that absolutely so that's um, much better and you know for, for a complete beginner that's picking their hook up for the first time mm. then um, you know again I'm at the end of <laughs> I'm at the yes, end of the, the end screen of the phone I'll no, give no, you not a number later <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the end of the screen if you need me. Yes. Um, but I Wendy say, is very helpful, so she, if you message her, she will send you. Just have you. a go. Just she, have a go. Just um, have a go. She will answer you, I promise. <laughs> I, I do, eventually. Yeah. Um, I've had some wonderful messages saying, you know, I'm picking my hook up again and I'm loving it and I just think that's amazing. Just, I like to have something that's a little bit out of my limit because then I learn. Well, and do you know the best thing about crochet? I taught my daughter to crochet. She couldn't crochet. I taught her the other day. Wow. Did I have a day? Well, I taught her and she just picked it up like that. I was so proud. I couldn't, I'm more proud than anything else she'd ever done. Did you have a proud mama moment? More than anything <laughs> else was the fact that she picked up crochet really quick. She goes, well, okay, right, I've got that. I'm um, after like 10 minutes. I'm going to do a sunflower. <gasps> so Excuse she, me, so she, after 10 minutes? Yes, yeah, so, so she'd done like two rows, rounds when I've done that, okay. <laughs> and then she gets the phone and goes, oh, I like this sunflower. I'm going to do that. I go, well, it's got popcorn <gasps> stitch and it's got 
something else. I can't remember, but there was another one. Mm -hmm. And she goes, oh, it's fine, I'll have a look on YouTube. I thought, oh, brilliant, brilliant. But, um, but you know, you've just got to have a go. And we I sometimes said to her, limit ourselves, don't we? Well, she can knit, you see. So I oh, said, right. I don't think you'll find it too difficult. But mm -hmm. what I said to her, the best thing about crochet is it's really easy to undo. Whereas mm -hmm. with knitting, when you undo it, you've got to get them all back on. But with crochet, you just undo it. Well, it's when you look down to your knitting and you see a stitch. Mm. And, and my mum my mum won awards for her knitting. She was the most incredible knitter ever. And she got oh, you just do this. And, I'm going, mm. and then when you have to pick it up, yeah. and there are methods But with of doing crochet, it, you see, yes. so if you get that first round and you think, yeah. oh, I just, just undo it. And yeah, just pull it back mm. to how it was. Um, but so you just keep going round and everything is explained in there. Um, and... It is very, very self-explanatory um, because, as I say, rows two, four and six are the same. And then when you get to these outer rows, again, um, I, I go by them stitch by stitch and they are just a repetition all the way around. And then you then turn it into a square because this was the feature I wanted. I didn't just want a granny square. I wanted something when you looked at it, you get that wow factor. Yeah, well, and it is, isn't it? It's really, and because it's so textured as well, that's what I like with the popcorns. You want to touch it, don't you? It does. And um, if you look on the back, um, and this is when you design something with something like a raised stitch, you do run the risk of having a hollow back. But this isn't. This is completely mm. flat. Yeah, it is. Um, really and flat. again, it's, it's a lot of creating and unpicking and creating and unpicking mm. until you get exactly until you the get, look. Yes. Oh yes, until you want. Yeah, so say you unpick a lot with crochet. When you design crochet, you unpick even more. Unpick even more, mm. yes. And, and I know initially with, um, with the block of the month, we gave too much wool because it's not ideal to keep knitting up the same wool time no, and time and time no. again. But once you, you get your tension and you are quite accomplished, then there's not really an issue with it, that's fine. Um, and as I say, in the instructions, it is step by step. And it tells you the only other stitch that I've not bought to you before is the double crochet, uh, the double treble, which I think I have demonstrated it at one point. Um, but again, it tells you exactly what right. to do in there. So if, you've, if you're new to crochet, you can do this. And if you've done a granny square, this is the next. This is a good move on from that. As well. Yes, and I know that, as I say, with the block of the month, it's all been about the granny square. Uh, yes, this is definitely something to progress because what you're doing is you're not putting just normal sti normal mm. treble stitches in. You're doing different stitches. I mean, but what's great is you are losing normal stitches to create other things. So you're doing the popcorn stitch, but you're just using trebles. Mm -hmm. And that's why you mustn't be frightened. Just give it a go mm. and you can always unpick it. And I know that the hardest thing when you learn start to learn crochet is your tension. And especially if you're a knitter, um, sometimes you might have to have had the wool in different hands. I know mm. that when I made the transition, I did struggle a little bit with my tension. But you will get it. I promise you, you will absolutely get it. But yeah, it's completely row by row. But if there is, if you do get stuck, then just message me mm. and I'll be able to, to help you with that. Um, and then I've created the front a little, very slightly smaller than the body of the bag. Yes, well that makes sense because it yeah. would be, wouldn't it? And um, you know, I, I don't want to go row by row with this because as I say, the instructions are... Yeah, it's, are, all, it's it all, in all in there. It is all in there for you. There. You don't need to go... Um, and it, to, the, to the point where you turn it in from a circle into a square, I tell you mm. exactly how many of each stitch to do. Okay. But this is what I wanted to move on because we've got a few different techniques in this bag and this is why I think it's going to be perfect for someone that's just starting out because you've got working in the round, Mm. Then you've got working as a granny square. We then have working in rows. Wow. And the strap is Tunisian crochet. Ooh. Ooh. So do, we, do we have to have a different hook? No. <gasps> Tunisian crochet with a normal crochet yep. hook. How this, exciting. It's about the length of the... Is it called a shaft on it? I think Probably. it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, because they do come in different lengths. Yeah, I mean, I have, I have got my Tunisian crochet <laughs> hooks. Um, but they were so long; it was it was, it was not yeah. good. So I tried these, it. These one, this one will be fine though. But they do come. You can get, I think, fifteen centimeters and twelve centimeters. They do come in different lengths. You literally need that much. Yes, yeah, so that's fine. But once you start with this, um, and I will, because I went on to this next, and then I tackled the rows because um, a lot of people think that you have to start in rows with crochet. Absolutely not. The first thing, if I'm teaching someone a newbie, mm. start with a granny square because your tension doesn't, you don't have to worry so much about yeah, your tension. Yeah, I know, I also, I know I'm totally with you. I think the round is easier. Working in rows. But, and also what you learn from count. doing that is easy. It makes that. Absolutely. Now I have wound mine into cakes. Nice. <laughs> but yours will come like that. Yes. 
but please do wind now if you want to wind them into cakes they're a lot easier to deal with we do sell ball winders on the website with there's two different ones there's the plastic one and the wooden one um, if you go on to yarnlane.com and you will see them on there the ball winders it is brilliant because um, they know, don't get tangled. And you know, they don't I have the off. wooden one. You know, it's my. It, I know, it was my dream. I know. I have the plastic one. <laughs> this is you can you can get an Aaron hundred gram ball on the plastic one. Right. Because I know um, I I wind my uh, jute, so I have massive balls. Uh, they are. Yeah. It is. It is nice to pre. And if you're using the hanks, you will need to pre wind them. Never, never knit or crochet from the hank. Definitely. Mm. And um, the first hank I got in a little bit of a pickle <laughs> because I just thought, yeah, and pulled it. I know, I know you told you me. Know I know, you I know that. You know that. In fact, I think, I think I you told wait. me that. I couldn't wait. <laughs> I so thought... the next time I had it hanging, I thought, yeah, that's yeah. the obvious one because it obviously drops out. The one yes. that wants to start winding comes out. Um, but you've got the mm. swift. That'd yes. be amazing. I mean, you don't have to wind. You don't have to wind them, but if and you don't have to use a ball winder. You can just wind them by hand. It's just if you've got one, or if you've started to do a lot of knitting and crochet, it's the, a really nice gadget to invest in. I love mine. I would definitely work um, with the hanks, though. I would definitely put them into balls. Yes, the other ones you don't have to, mm. um, but definitely those because yeah, you, you are going to eat yourself in a bit of a pickle. Right. So we're now going to make the strap. Oh, so this we're going to learn tuning yeah, in crochet. This is mm. so so easy. This is now. I've made. Oh, there he is. I've made a seven stitch strap, but there is nothing to stop you doing yours wider if you want to. Okay. Um, however many stitches you start with in the chain is how many, how many stitches you'll have in your strap, but it looks like webbing. It does. It looks exactly like webbing. So if you could, if you didn't want to, you could use webbing <laughs> if you wanted to. But Perfect, that's that up to be. you, so you know you can choose to do that or not. But it is quite nice to make your own because it doesn't stretch. There is an element, and, and I know. Yeah, I mean it is going to be a bit. You isn't notice it? when you put the bag on. Yes. Um, it sat a little bit high. Now that was intentional because as you start putting things into it, it's naturally going yeah. to stretch. But I'm going to stretch this. And you but can you see could also it's only going to go sew it so far to fun. webbing as well, couldn't you? That's what I did think. If you wanted to, you know, I mean, it really is, it's going to stretch a little bit, mm. not as much as normal crochet, but if you do, you could use just webbing or sew this onto some webbing. So do take to. that into consideration right. when you're designing the length of it. And I've put in there, it depends how tall you are um, to measure it to Right, exactly. okay. So the first thing, have you done this before? Have you done no, this? You're all no, right. I haven't. So, so I'm fascinated by this. the first thing this. we're going to do, I've made, I, I explained how to do the slip knot um, earlier. Yeah. So I've just made one slip knot. And then I'm going to chain, and in my case, I'm sure it was seven, but it's all in instructions. I think it was seven. So I'm just going to... It is to seven. It is. Good. Chain seven. Good. So that's five, <laughs> that's six, and that's seven. So remember, a chain is just yarn over hook and pull through. Now, we've got seven chains here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to miss the first chain that's closest to the hook. If I go into that first chain, it's just going to undo the one on the hook. But because I've gone in there... I've got the one on the hook that counts as one. Mm. So I insert into the second chain from hook, yarn over and pull through. So I now have two loops on my hook. I insert into the next chain, yarn over and pull through. Three loops. And you keep going until you've got your seven. Yeah, this is weird, isn't it? We're like oh, knitting now. Oh, it's cool, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. I don't think I did enough because I wasn't paying attention. Six. I'm just going to do one into that extra one. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. Actually, I'm only going to have six. One, two. I'll just do six in mine. It doesn't matter. Right. So I've got my chains on the hook. Now, we now have to get them off the hook. Yeah. Oh, you are looking very perplexed. I am. Because I'm, I'm thinking, very, how are you going to get easy. them off that hook? All you need to think about is this little one, I've named him Billy, because he's Billy No Mates. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how we, you, you'll learn something quicker if you make something simple. Right, so it. Billy No Mates. So little Billy No Mates is on his own at the party. Mm. So we take him off on his own. Now what that will do, that will give you a nice straight edge. Right. The others go off in pairs. So we yarn over. Slip off two, yarn over, slip off two, yarn over, and keep going 
until you get back to Billy's mate on the other side all on his right. own. Right. So that's it, right? So now we now want to get back to this side. Mm. So we just pick up these vertical, and I don't know if you can come in any closer. Sorry, Emma. There's vertical stitches here. Oh, that's good. So you can see these vertical stitches here. Mm. So that's what we're interested in. Now the first vertical belongs to this little chap on here, so we don't want to go into him. So we insert the hook under the second vertical, mm. yarn over, and pull through. We've now got two loops on the hook. Insert under the next vertical, yarn over, and pull through. And you keep going until we get so I, I only had six. You should have seven, but I only had six. Um, so we, sorry. It is very, very hot in here. I do apologise. So we've got five on. Now the last one is always located at the end, but you might miss it. Because remember we took Billy off first. Yeah. And he created his little stitch there. So we just need to go in there. Into Billy. Into Billy and yarn over. And now we've got... Uh, you'll have seven, I've got six sti stitches back on the hook. And then all we do is we take him off first on his own, and yeah, then the rest then come off in pairs. Two. So yarn off, pick up two, yarn off, take off two, yarn off, and keep going, oops, until you get to the end, and then we're back where we started again. And that's all you do. And so you just keep going back again. And then again. I just go back into that second. Remember, the first one has already got his stitch on the hook anyway. Yes. And then you just keep going, going under that vertical stitch, yarn over, pull off, until you get, don't forget, the little one at the end, we must go into that one. Otherwise, you won't have a nice straight edge until you've got the same amount. Now, I have done seven. There is nothing to stop you doing nine yeah ten, so if 12. you said right well I want to attach it to a bit of webbing or whatever then you just do as many as you need absolutely and because we've got a smaller hook than we need mm. it makes it much tighter yeah I mean it is it is stretched a little bit but not much and and that was the difficulty with this I didn't want something to stretch because you'd end up with it around your knees after yeah. a couple of wears, wouldn't you? And we wouldn't want that. So, um, and that's why I went for this because I wanted it to look like webbing, mm. and it's teaching you. It's brilliant. No, technique. I think that's lovely. That's so really good. So you've never good. done that before. And no, the... I've never done that. So now, I can have a go. This this particular hook, there isn't a huge amount of actual hook there. No, but I reckon I could probably yeah, do. Yeah, that's true. Ooh, I, I mean, if know. you had if you had like the the play metal ones like this one, you could get even that more. That one you could. Yes. Couldn't you? So if you had this one, obviously you haven't got the plastic handle, mm. so you can get more on. But, but that is, and because you haven't got, the Tunisian crochet is amazing. I love mm. doing it because you can just see the grows growing and growing and growing. And if someone is new to crochet and they are struggling keeping their straight crochet straight, yeah. try Tunisian crochet. That's true, actually. Yeah, so the only difference between a normal hook and a Tunisian is it has an end on it, like a knitting needle, doesn't it? Like that. But for something like this yeah. with a few, they're not going to fall off the end, so it Absolutely doesn't matter. Not. So you don't need any special, you just need your 3.5 yes. hook. Um, that's all you need, you and don't that's need anything all special. You need. Um, what I will say, the next part, so I'm going to, I'm going to see lots of people I think are just going to be sitting there making webbing. Yeah, <laughs> making webbing. Because making it's webbing one of those life. things that once you start, you're just <laughs> sitting there mm. and you just carry on. So now we're going to make the main body of the bag itself. Now, with this one, um, I wanted the rows to be vertical. Yes. Because if you've got horizontal rows here, you can see there's quite a bit of stretch there. And we've gone down to a really tiny hook, but there's still quite a bit of stretch. But this way, there isn't so much. So when yes. you, you make the bag and Oh, so the front half, and the back is in one piece. It's all in one piece, right, which is nice. brilliant. So there's not going to be mm. that much stretch. So when you put something in the back, in the bag, yeah. it's not going to. It's perfect. not going to droop. Um, oh, you've really thought this through, Wendy. Oh, haven't I have. You? I've She's really of, thought this through. <laughs> I thought of everything um, because I I know what I like, mm. and if a bag, if I did put it in, and first of all, it ended down there after two uses, yes, I wouldn't want that's it. True. But if I put something in it um, and it fell through, that's why I wanted to go for a much smaller hook. Yeah, no, it's perfect. perfect. But if you do want to go for a bigger hook, you you probably won't get enough to do two bags. Right. Um, and bearing in mind it will be more open width. But you will have enough for, always have enough for one. 
You'll always have enough for one, thankfully. <laughs> and I've got even got a little bit of more brown. I was going to put some fringing on it, and I thought maybe that's one it's step too far. It's got ears instead. Ears. No, I was going to put fringing as well on it. You could do, but it looks like it's got little ears. Love that one. <laughs> ears. So I just want to show you the technique, and this um, is for the working in rows now. Mm. Um, as Double crochet is one of the, the more basic stitches that you'll learn probably instantly. Now, the technique I'm going to show you is also brilliant for amigurumi, which is, as we know, it's the creating of animals and shapes, yes. and 3D shapes, because it gives you a smaller weave to your stitch. So I'll just do a, a basic double crochet, which is insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Now I'm going to do a few of these just so that hopefully you'll be able to see the difference when I then take it to the stitch that we're going to do. Well actually you can see already that it started to go up because these stitches are bigger than these stitches. So we want to keep a really nice tight weave. So what we do is we insert our hook. Now instead of doing a yarn over, we do a yarn under. So we pull the yarn under the hook. Sorry Emma. We pull the yarn under the hook and pull through and then we do our yarn over. So I'll show you that again. So we insert the hook and we bring the yarn under the hook, pull through and yarn over the hook. Now because the yarn doesn't have so far to travel, it makes a smaller stitch. Now when I do it, you, you will get quicker at this because it, it does feel really odd when you first do it, but I put it in and then I just hook it back and that's the equivalent of a, as a yarn under. So I put it in and I just use the hook to pull it back. Put it in and pull it back. But if you want to, to take it right back to basic, you put it in, bring the yarn from under the hook, pull through and then we yarn over. Now you can make it even smaller if you want to and do yarn under, yarn under on both steps. But bearing in mind the front has been designed with the yarn under, mm. yarn over technique. So it's not going to, it won't fit. But the only thing that I would say, if you start making your bag, once you've finished it for the amount of rows that I've done, if you want it a bit wider, you can do it a bit wider. But I have designed it so that the stripes sit centrally. Yes, yeah, which they do on that beautiful. Yeah, um, that all makes sense. Now, there is a right and a wrong way, but there's no right and wrong way as far as I'm concerned, because if I can show you this strip here that I've done, you can see that this looks quite jagged, these stripes. Oh, I see, mm -hmm. yes. And then when I turn it over, they look slightly different. Now, this is an absolute personal preference. Yes, yeah, so you've got to choose. You've gone you for jagged. Have, I have, you see. Well, I think I might have done jagged on one, have I done on then on the other one? No, I think you've no, gone have for I jagged. Gone? Yes. You've gone for jagged on both. Now, I... Because that's not jagged mm -hmm. on the inside. See, look, that's not jagged. And that is... Mm -hmm. See, I liked, mm. I liked that look. Right, uh, you've got two more minutes, Wendy. Oh, gosh. So there's no right or wrong way. You can choose. You can choose. Um, so what you want to do is the one that you've chosen needs to be on the inside. So once you, you carry on doing all your rows until you've got, as um, in the instructions, it tells you how many to do, and then you place right sides together. So I was, I'm now choosing the non-jagged to right. be my right side. And then you're going to, you're going to um, you can either hand stitch or double crochet or slip stitch. Um, I think the instructions tell you to slip stitch down the side and then you do the same the other side and then you turn it in the right way and then you're going to have your right side on the outside. Yeah, and I guess by seaming it that way as well, that gives it extra strength, doesn't it? It does. And then um, you finish it off, and I think you can show it on the bag, You'll, you, you uh, double crochet stitch around the top just to finish the top edge. And then yes. what that will also do, it will neaten the ends of the rows. Yes, I see what you mean, yes. Perfect. Um, and then you insert your strap and put it inside the bag, and then you sew it about an inch and a half down. So it's extra inside. strong. So that it is extra strong. And you could put a little button feature on the outside. Yeah, that's true. There, there's so many things that you can do. I just wanted to give you the basic pom poms. Bag. You could put pom pom bottles. Pom poms on. Look you at those. You could add trim to them. Um, you could Love add them. Uh, tassels Ears. to them. It's st just stunning, isn't it? You could add little tassels with beads on. But I just wanted to give you the basic bag, and I can't wait to see people make it 
and then put their own take on it. Well, thank you very much, You're Wendy. Very welcome. That's been great. I've learned loads, loads. Good. It's good. been really good. Thank you so much. So let me just go back through the kits. So if you want to make the pure wool one, there are only four left. Oh. Unfortunately, 30 in baskets. Huh? How did we manage that? Oh, but anyway, if you want that one, you get 200 grams of accru, one of light grey, one of medium grey, and one of brown black. And it is beautiful. And it smells like a sheep. Just lovely. And full, inst full instructions, please do check out because obviously they're going to go. Everything you need is in there. Remember, there's enough to make two. Right down today's date, which is the 16th of um, August, because then when you get your kit back home, you can watch back Wendy's demo and do message if you have any questions. The one that Wendy was working with, that's too many W's, um, the blue one, that's um, Stylecraft Acrylic Aran Yarn. So it's a really lovely quality. It's acrylic, hence it's um, lower cost, but it is a beautiful quality yarn. You get two balls of white and then the three shades of blue. So you get one of Cornish blue, one of denim and one of midnight. And then it's up to you what order you put them in. And obviously the full instructions, that's in my way, isn't it? Um, so there's all the blues. So it just depends. You just have to decide, are you a wool person or a blue person or remember, remember, there's enough to make two, enough to make two. And then the last one, um, which is this one, the florals one, pretty. That's your festival one, isn't it? Just lovely. It's just pretty. I mean, I honestly, I always use mine for going out. There's only three of those remaining. There are two balls of cream, a pink, which is fondant, um, meadow, and aster. Can't remember the names of them. Aren't they pretty? Lovely. So anyone who's doing block of the month will recognise a couple of those they will. colours. I'm just bowled over at the price because I know. first of all you got the instructions, but secondly, if you can make two, that makes it nine fifty a bag. Now, I know. I saw this on a well-known mm. a handmade site. Not this one, but a shoulder similar. bag. Well, it wasn't even similar, but it was mm. uh, for £40. Pound. Well, there you go then. See? And, you know, if you want to line it, you can. Um, now, I have also brought back a few, because we know we love Wendy's designs, and we do have a little bit of stock of a couple of her things. So do you remember the glorious storage baskets, which I have here? Now, unfortunately, the colour that Wendy did these in here has sold out, but anyone who missed out on them, if you want, you in the... Um, in the kit, there's enough to make all three, the big, the medium, and the baby one. But the cream is exactly the same, but the, and they're great, aren't they? You can make them as tall as you want, but the cream, um, the, the bit that's the grey on here will be denim. And as usual, Wendy's brilliant instructions that make sense. So if you missed that show and you missed out, we do have a very few of them left. So if you want to crochet the storage baskets, easy peasy, even beginners can do it. You get this beautiful drifter chunky yarn. And if you like pink, we have exactly the same, but in the rose colourway. So again, you get um, 200 gram balls of, I think it's called calico. Calico. They call it calico because it is. And then you get 100 grams of rose. So exactly the same as the um, this storage basket, but the, the grey bit will be calico instead. Um, so if you've, you know, if you've covered your postage, you've put, put the other in your basket, you want to make some storage baskets, those are they. And finally, um, Wendy also designed these gorgeous, on the same show, the crochet wash kit, which I love, absolutely love. So in... Right, so white, actually, well, I'll start with white and silver then. So the one that we've got the picture of, white and silver, now in the kit, there is enough to make the face scrubs, the wash mitts. I've got to remember now. Three of each of the set. Three of each. Mm. So you can make the face pad, the face cloth, and the laundry storage bag. Six face pads. Six face pads. One, one uh, cloth. One and one wash, wash cloth. bag. 
and a little wash Time's bag three. as well. And you can make three of each of these. So this is perfect for Christmas. If you want to make three of those sets, there is enough in this kit to make three whole complete sets, as in that photo, not three pads, but three whole sets. So this is the white and gray. This is 100% cotton yarn absolutely perfect you know and the whole sort of reusable recyclable you chuck them in the washing machine the face pads you take all your makeup off with them and then you use them again fantastic christmas gift for somebody so you could start crocheting now and you would be ready if you would rather it in the um rose colorway so you could buy one of each think of all these aren't they lovely but you know everybody would love these because you can get all of your um Bit, or your wash kit in there. You can use this to take your makeup off. You've got the the flannel as well, the washcloth. So what? I've had a thought. What? what you do is you buy them for a crocheter because you love them. Yeah. And then can make them for you and give them back to you. Absolutely. Yes. Mm. Buy them for a crocheter, or you make them as presents. And everybody loves a handmade present, don't they? And really useful, aren't they? That's just what people need. Um, because everybody is, everyone is into the recycling and this is a great thing. And then finally, if you like white and blue, exactly, that will do exactly the same. You can make three, this photo, you make three sets of that. It's not that you make three lots of washcloths, three sets of that. And you get two balls of white and one of blue. Depends on what colour you want to do. Um, the, unfortunately, the um, Yarn Lane Love sold out. I'm not surprised. Really good, really good. So thank you so much for joining me and Wendy on Yarn Lane today. It has been a pleasure. Um, oh, I actually, I forgot the crochet, the blocking board. Do oh. we need to block? I blocked. Right. You okay. don't have to block, but so I blocked. So if you want to block, have we got the graphics for that one, Hannah? I forgot the blocking board. Here's the block. I love my blocking board. I love blocking. It's brilliant. So you... Um, when you want to block it and get it to the right size, just put it in warm water, roll it up in a towel. I mean, some, well, everyone does it differently. Some people just spray it with mm. water. I, I completely mm. immerse mine with a bit of fabric conditioner because it makes it smell better. Then roll it up in a towel. I'm going to try that because I think that's probably the better option. It smells nice and it makes it slightly softer. Mm. You then put it into a white towel so that no dye moves over. Although you don't want to make these fluid you want them to retain there and then you roll it up in the towel to get all of the spare water out and then you put them on your blocking board and pin them out to the I'm shape have a go at that then you put them on a chair in front of the radiator oh, that, i always spritz so i'm definitely going to try and well i don't know I, sam sabido always spritzes as well mm. but i'm just a bit but let's just go for no, I'm it gonna do what, I'm it gonna obviously go. takes longer to dry but in the summer it will dry quickly but with these if you're doing several squares you stack them as well but just leave a little oh, space between them definitely going to try that I thought, well, I don't want to put them on the radiator because that might be too much. No. So I put them on a chair in front of the radiator. That's or, brilliant. well, I used to do it on my ironing board, but then I, said, I couldn't iron for a but few days. But they're brilliant because you, you because the holes are all over them, you can put your own sizes and it doesn't yes, have to be square. Yes, so you would be able to get that yeah, size. If you want a rectangle, you? you can make it into a rectangle. It's brilliant. They're brilliant, those boards. Um, and also, I thought when I first got them, you could only get one square, but you can stack them. Anyway, anyway, do get a blocking board. <laughs> Yarn Lane will be back with us on Friday when, oh yes, books and bundles. And that's going to be a good one. So I've put together some bundles for you where you get a book and you get free yarn with it. And all the yarn is related to the book. So I thought it'd be just really nice for anyone who's beginning and wants to be on to give you a little inspiration. You get book and free yarn. And it will also be back on Saturday when we have um, Alec and Alice is on with her beautiful shawls, beaded lace weight shawls. You're going to love that. Anyway, thank you for joining me so much today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please don't forget if it's in your basket, please check out because we are very limited in stock and um, I will see you next week.